Does anyone else's dog just act like a, a child? He's so old now. You really should get over this. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I had no plans to vlog today. Um, I was vlogging on Tuesday, um, but I thought I would just do a vlog today. Um, I have not got much planned. I have more planned than I usually do, but it's not like I started to film this vlog and I'm like, I've got a whole day planned, no. I, and I've had this like stomach pain for like three weeks and I was in the restaurant and I was like, I cannot with this stomach ache anymore. So I went into my GP and I've got an emergency appointment at four o'clock today. So I'm feeling like happy that I'm gonna be able to see a doctor about my stomach because I don't know what is going on, but you know, when it reaches a point you think, like there's surely something that's not right. So I've got the doctors at four o'clock. I think I wanna go out and have some me time. I've not had the house to myself for a long time. I always find it difficult to film when the house is busy because you know, you don't wanna be in people's way whilst you're filming and stuff like that. I might take myself out. Um, I'm gonna take some pain killers for my stomach because she's not doing well. I could just sit and chill, but I was like, if I feel too unwell, I'll just come home and we'll just chill. But I wanna try and go out because the stomach ache has like gone off a bit. And do you ever find it's always the way, when you go to the doctors about something, it just calms down. But the other night I was sleeping and I woke up and it was like this huge stomach ache. It was almost like um, someone was like pressing on my intestines. So yeah, I didn't eat, eat any breakfast because I was rushing and then I didn't want to eat any in the um, restaurant because I was like, I don't want to risk my stomach like kicking off at me. So I just didn't. But I think I'm gonna make a little bit of food, maybe make a drink, have my tablets and then go to the shops. I was raving about a book that I cannot get into for the life of me, but I think I've misjudged the book because I picked it up last night and I was like reading a few pages and I was like, yeah, I think I misjudged this. So I'm definitely gonna have a go at reading that again. I have about three hours until my doctor's appointment, which I'm usually like really scared about the doctors. And this is like a big thing for me. Like I know that for some people, like they'll get it, some people won't, but Making myself a doctor's appointment is a huge deal. Not because I'm worried about calling people and whatnot, but because I'm just quite a health anxious person and I'd rather avoid it, which is not a good thing. So I'm trying to change my ways. And usually touch wood, like I don't have anything wrong with me, but I do find the doctors like quite a scary place. Um, obviously with what happened to my dad recently, we were always at the doctors and it's just not a, place like no one enjoys it but obviously some people get more anxious with the doctors than others so i'm proud of myself today <laughs> that i made a doctor's appointment and i'm so grateful that i managed to get one on the same day that usually never happens which also makes me worried like does she think there's something wrong with me anyways we're not gonna worry about that we're just gonna distract ourselves and go out for a bit i'm trying to decide where i want to go i might drive into town because it's closer to my house than another shopping centre, like half an hour away. Um, just have a little walk around. Like I don't need anything, but it's just one of those days where I'm like, I need to make myself a bit busy, you know? So that's the plan. Um, and if you've reached this video and you've never reached my channel before, then hello. My name is Meg. I post twice a week vlogs and just like longer videos talking about loads of different things like mental health, psychology. So. If you're interested in that, and if you've somehow found me, please hit the subscribe button. Um, you can always unsubscribe later if you change your mind. It's all good. Let's make some food. I just wanted to use this time in this video to talk a little bit about health anxiety. And I have spoken about this on my channel before, but I think that when I make my full length videos about things, when I've planned things out, it can be easy to miss out on some of the nuances. So 
I have always been, I would say, quite health conscious, especially after the pandemic and during the pandemic. I think we all were. And recently, my dad became really unwell and got a disease that was quite rare. And it has kind of spiraled my health anxiety to different levels. And whilst I'm recording this and I'm having a good week with my health anxiety, it definitely manifests for me quite heavily at the moment and I mentioned in this video that I had a doctor's appointment and I just wanted to focus on that a little bit for health anxiety sufferers in this vlog. Why is it difficult for people with health anxiety to make a doctor's appointment? A lot of people say that they overdo it with the doctors and make loads and loads of doctor's appointments and there's never anything wrong. Also, if you are avoiding the doctors because you're scared of what you might find out is also definitely a thing. So I am in between. Sometimes I'm okay with it, sometimes I'm not. Today I kind of busied myself to not overthink and not worry about my health the point where I am just spiraling and I think what can be difficult for people with health anxiety is when it reaches a level that is really really difficult to deal with you can become quite low and then doing things to take your mind off it can be hard but I think for me one of the most important things for my health anxiety is to get moving go to the gym or go out and about take myself out just to take my mind off things and I think distraction can be good, but it's the boundary between distraction and avoidance again, and how I found a positive middle ground between this, maybe a more healthy approach, is to go out and have some alone time and take some time to reflect on how I'm feeling in the moment. And I think it's easy for health anxiety sufferers when you're having a bad week, a bad day, a specifically bad spiral, is to assume that things are not going to get better. And I think this is quite frequent, of course, within a lot of mental health disorders um, or struggles, but it does get better and I have suffered now with anxiety twitching for maybe a month and a half and over the past couple days it has definitely subsided and I have not had the anxiety twitches as much and I think when I have moments like this it's good to remind me but also remind you if you're watching this and you suffer with health anxiety that good days are on the horizon and I think that is hard to believe but I'm living proof and I think I was reflecting on what I've been through over the past couple months and I've been through a very difficult time and I think that when someone really has been through it and they can promise you that there's things that will get better um, is definitely a sign. So let me know in the comments how you're doing um, because I know a lot of my viewers came from my health anxiety videos and I wanted to speak more about that in my vlog. So if you've reached this, let me know how you're doing in the comments and if you agree with what I'm saying, if what I'm saying helped at all and if you want me to talk about anything else, let me know in the comments because that will help. But yeah, let's carry on with the vlog. I have just finished this book, um, The Fury by Alex Michelandes. It was amazing. Um, I would highly recommend reading like any of his work if you can. Um, he's got three books out, the Silent Patient, The Maidens and The Fury. And they all kind of, oh, are you, can you see me? They all kind of intertwine and it is just, it is just a brilliant book as well as all of his other ones. It's really peaceful today in my house. It's really quiet. Um, so now I'm going to go out. Um, I was going to do my hair, but I really can't be bothered and I think it looks okay. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. Maybe do a little bit of book shopping, see if they've got any good books on sale. Um, there are a few books that I want to read that are in Waterstones. They're like full price. But I think that Waterstones might have a sale on at the moment. So yeah. Let's go and have a look. Come and join me.
Okay, so the first one I got was The Coworker by Frida McFadden. Um, this one looked really, really good because there's like emails, like chapters with email threads in. And I thought, never read anything like this before. It kind of reminded me of Noughts and Crosses because in Noughts and, Noughts and Crosses, there is like different chapters for two characters. So it kind of reminded me of that, which I like. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to read this one. I also got Lee Child's No Plan B. This was four pounds. So I'm happy about that. It was £22, then it was reduced to £11 and I got it for £4. So I thought it must be good. If it was that expensive in the first place. So this one is about just kind of murder mystery. I was quite intrigued by the cover because it looked like there was like some sort of scene in a prison. I've never read a book like set in a prison before. So that one looks good. Then I got this one, and this one was £1.50. It is about a man who puts a killer behind bars and then the killer comes out again. And that just, that just sucked me in. And I have recently been reading the same authors. So I've got one more book to read by an author called Nita Prose. I read The Maid and now I'm reading The Guest. I finished all of my Alex, Alex Michelandi's books today and I saw on the back that they, he's got loads of books or she, Joe, Joe, is it a man? Yeah, it's a man. So all of these books. So I thought if I can find an author that I really like that's got loads of books, I'm here for it because Nita Prose and Alex only have like two and three books retrospectively. So I'm like, need to get more. This one, oh, this is by Joe Nesbo as well. So these are by the same author. This one's also pound fifty. I thought this one would be a really good one to get through really quick because, I mean, I say really quick, it's still 214 pages. I think it's just really small writing. I mean, how long is this one? This one is 611 pages. We'll see. I feel like with long books, I worry if they just waffle on about unnecessary things, you know? So hopefully that doesn't happen, but I don't mind waffle as long as it's well-written waffle, you know? If you know anything about my channel, I can waffle. I'm not I'm not shy of waffle, but anyway, so these are my books that I bought. Pretty happy about them. And now I have like a full shelf that I need to read. I am getting through books really quick, so I have to buy before I finish what I'm like currently reading and I got another hardback and I was against buying hardback books because they're I thought they were quite hard to read but it actually feels quite special to read a hardback so this is my special book maybe I can save that for March So I have just managed to organise my bookshelf a little bit. I'm going to start reading All of Us by A.F. Carter, which is about a lady with multiple personalities as a coping mechanism for the trauma she went through. So we shall see what this one is like. How long is it? It is 271 pages. So I feel like hopefully I can get through this one quite quick. I mean, I say that about like, all of my books because I just love a page turner and I feel a little bit sad because I finished The Fury today. That was just unreal. That's all the books he's written. I've read The Silent Patient, The Maidens, The Fury, that's it. So I'm probably gonna have to wait another year and a half, two years. I'm still waiting on Matt Haig. Matt Haig, where are you? Why, why haven't you, <laughs> I was gonna about to say posted a new book, <laughs> uploaded a new book. 
you know what I mean anyways so yeah I'm gonna have a read of this one I've been making bookmarks on all of my like the books that I've read because this is just a side note this is just a side note but I just need to I just need should I talk about it I'll give you a little snapshot because I might talk about it properly in my like February reads video. There were some nuggets in The Maidens, The Silent Patient, The Fury that I was just, obviously I'm a therapy student and the way that psychology, therapy frameworks were embedded within the story, I was like, I feel like this book was made for me. I feel like that's such a, that's how you can tell it's a good author is when you feel like the book was made for you, you know? You feel like you have that connection. So now I'm moving on to some new books. Some kind of oddsies. I don't have the whole sets of all of the authors, but I'm just kind of reading, you know, separate books. I've got so many books. How many? Maybe 15 that I need to get through. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start with this one now. I am going out with my friends. Well, I'm going to my friend's house in a little while. So I need to keep an eye on the times, but I'm gonna read for a little bit before I go out um so hopefully I can be in a good place when I get into bed tonight and already be in the story a little bit you know whenever I finish a book I always start a new one as soon as I can because starting a book can be a little bit clunky sometimes for me so yeah let's begin